Welcome back to Night Mine, friends. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. I'm Nick Nocturne, and we're back to finish our study of Marble Hornets. It's the final season, and it's also the longest, so we're going to make this a little bit easier. Tonight, we'll tear through part one. After that, part two. If you've made it this far, you already know what we've discovered with our major notes, so let's dive in. Season 3 starts with Jay investigating the antique store he saw Tim walk out of last entry. He spends an absurd amount of time on Twitter recording every few minutes of action that occurs in and around this antique store. We're not going to cover it because nothing happens. It's a red herring but was a very engaging experience for Twitter followers at the time. Season 3 actually starts with entry number 53 on March 10, 2012. After haunting the antique store for over a week, Jay spots Tim walk out of a mental health clinic down the street. He decides to do the same thing at the clinic now in hopes of catching Tim and eventually succeeds in meeting him outside before an appointment. Tim's memory of Jay only goes as far as their interview back in Season 1, and Jay says he's still trying to finish Marvel Hornets. Tim agrees to help and mentions he has some tapes from the set he's not attached to. If it helps with Jay's project, he can take them. Jay will absolutely take the tapes, and he gives Tim his phone number before parting ways. When Tim finds the tapes, he'll give Jay a call. Five days later, to the Ark responds. Did you happen to catch the evidence that Hoodie was there in the last entry? Take a look again as Jay backs up from the antique store window. Jay uploads entry number 54 on March 25th. He meets with Tim who gives him a bag of tapes. Tim says he hopes Jay will find what he's looking for and will help any way he can. Jay appreciates that but hurries back to his current location to begin uploading. The first tape is footage of the Marble Hornets crew running in the pouring rain. They meet up outside of a home and we can see Seth is among them, the cameraman for the film we haven't seen since season 1. Seth and Jay both leave and Tim, who's holding the camera, goes upstairs to his apartment. We jump cut to Alex holding the camera inside while playing with a keyboard. He and Tim talk a bit, then Alex hands over the camera. Brian enters, drying his head with a towel. A blackout occurs and Tim goes to flip the fuse box but the lights come on. He pans over the room and completely misses the operator standing there. Another blackout hits and Tim grabs a flashlight before returning to the music room. He sits down next to Brian and shines a light on Alex before there seems to be an operator attack and the camera dies. On April 4th, Jay tweets, According to entry 37, today is Alex's birthday. Just an hour and a half later, to the arc uploads DK. The coded message means, no choice, and the wild audio at the end creates a spectrogram message, today is your last birthday. The video description breaks down to, end him. Jay uploads more set footage in entry number 55. Tim, Brian, and Alex are heading out to do a shoot and Tim tells Alex he knows abandoned locations they could use for filming. After some interstitial footage is shot, Tim steps away to answer his phone and confirm a doctor's appointment. He mentions having a history of headaches, paranoia, and insomnia and will be coming in for sure. Jay notes that this may have led to Tim's masky state. Entry number 56 comes next in which Tim and Alex walk down the train track seen in the 5642 tape. They explore an abandoned building Tim knows and goes through some rooms until Alex spots another building out the window. Tim says he knows it's there, and it's an annex, but the place they're in is way better and he doesn't feel like going anywhere else, and he's coughing as he says all this. Alex says there's no way this place could pass for a school and they press on exploring the building. They explore upstairs, the roof, and the first floor again. Tim puts down the camera for a moment to take care of something personal and Alex walks over, picks up a pipe, and knocks him out. Tim's camera falls and we see the operator standing in the room where Alex had just been. The operator vanishes, Alex leaves, and we hear Tim coughing, each cough causing heavier audio distortion. Entry number 57 picks up hours after 56 ends. It's night and Tim wakes up alone in the abandoned building. He grabs the camera and escapes using only the night vision to guide him. Out in the woods, he comes down with a wave of sickness and takes a moment to collect himself while the flashlight beam roams around in the background. 
Tim pulls it together and makes his way to the abandoned building Alex had spotted earlier. Tim roams the halls before catching sight of Alex walking around with a heavier pipe and a flashlight. Tim hides from Alex but catches another coughing fit and can't contain it. The operator appears at the height of his fit and the tape freezes. Nothing more is on it. To the Ark responds to this entry with Session. The video description is, close by, I see you, as always. This is the first purely black and white old film style footage we've seen since Inquiry, and its timing does make sense. If to the arcs applying to entry number 57, a video about a terrified and confused Tim running around the woods trying to escape Alex before being attacked by the operator, the messages in session lend more evidence that black and white videos using old crank camera footage are to the arcs way of speaking directly to Tim. Even if he didn't get what was happening back then, one day he will understand. Jay uploads entry number 58 in which he and Tim discuss the tapes and the possibility of going to one of the abandoned locations. Tim agrees to take Jay around under the pretense that he still wants to finish Marble Hornets. Tim makes good on his promise that Friday morning and takes Jay to the building he showed Alex. Jay reiterates what Alex said to Tim almost verbatim and Tim agrees to take Jay to the other building but is noticeably irritated. Jay spots a room with a bent metal pipe that resembles the one where Brian found Tim in Alex's secret tape. Next door, Tim has a coughing fit. Something falls in a nearby room and they check, but nothing's there. Another noise is heard as they walk away, but again, it's nothing. Tim asks if Jay needs this for an abandoned hospital scene. He's starting to wonder if Jay really does want to finish a subpar student film. And there are several shots that tell us this did in fact used to be some kind of medical building. Walking around, Hoodie crosses the hallway and Jay gives chase. Hoodie leads him to an abandoned factory and its maintenance tunnel entrance. Jay wants to pursue, but Tim convinces him to lay off. He doesn't understand why Jay is chasing what seems to be a homeless man and is tired of all this. On the way back, Tim says that he doesn't know what Jay's up to, but he's had enough. They go back to their cars and leave. Jay realizes the Hooded Man is the same one from the previous videos. About two weeks later, Jay tweets, Tim just called. He wants to meet with me later tonight and talk about something important. Entry number 59 is uploaded. Tim does have something important to talk about and starts the conversation. Tim, listen, I- oh! <laughs> Student <laughs> film, you lie, piece of- <laughs> There are some very excellent takeaways from what Tim tells Jay in this entry. So after our little field trip, I couldn't help but shake this feeling that there was something uh. funny about you. So I do a search for Marble Hornets, and you want to know what I find? I was going to tell you tonight, Tim. I oh, swear. tonight? Tonight? Not last week, whenever you dragged me out to that hospital to chase after whoever that guy was? Huh? Not three months ago, whenever you followed me outside my own doctor's office? So much for the last few years makes so much sense now. I was doing fine. I was getting better, and then... <coughs> Imagine waking up one morning in the back seat of your car, miles away from home, with blood in your hair, and you have no idea how that happened. Imagine waking up one morning with your leg broken and no memory whatsoever of that happening. Think about that. Imagine not being able to keep a job because you call into work one morning and they say, Oh, we're sorry. We had to fire you because we haven't heard from you for the last three weeks. <coughs> Tim. But then suddenly it stops, and I start getting better, and I can hold steady work, and I can function like a normal human being for once in my life, and then suddenly you show up, putting a camera in my face, bringing back old memories like it couldn't possibly have any effect on anybody else. The meeting ends as badly as it began. Tim, wait, just listen to me. No, you listen to me. You can keep making your little detective videos all you want, but do me a favor and stay out of my life. To the Ark replies with reference. The code means his lies in the dark, making a complete message. Truth with light, his lies in the dark. The video description reads, do not fail. 
Jay goes back to the abandoned hospital alone and finds a surprise left for him by Hoodie. He follows the instruction and goes into the abandoned factory maintenance tunnel, kicking off one of the most terrifying sequences of the entire series. In the tunnel, Jay finds an operator doll in a file marked with an operator symbol and the word liar. He hears some footsteps above him and tries to make his way out of the tunnel. Jay escapes and runs back to his car. Entry number 60.5 is uploaded exploring the information in the file. It contains Tim's medical records and details a long history of internment at a psychiatric facility as a child, as well as a history of seizures, hallucinations, paranoia, and other issues. As he goes through the documents, Jay himself struggles with a coughing fit. The main points to take away from this entry are that Tim has been experiencing these kinds of issues his entire life and seemed to suffer the most during childhood. He also ran away from home constantly and would always be found in Rosswood Park. Tim is indeed a liar. He's been dealing with these issues much longer than he told Jay. On July 30th, Jay tweets out an image of a window in black and white with a single message, X. Instantly, we know this isn't Jay's post, even if it's on his account. The next day, the Arc uploads a video titled, Observation. The video description is, waiting on you, and there are a few hidden frames worth looking at. Another tweet comes up with a message, zero, and a link to the observation video. Put the two tweets together, and you get the operator symbol, a zero and an X. On August 3rd, a few new tweets. Do you hear thunder? Look outside when the lightning flashes. August 5th. You will not see me, but I will see you. August 8th, 8.03 p.m. The clouds are dark tonight. 10.06 p.m. This is for you. The link is to a private video on the Marble Hornets channel called Entry. Hoodie waits outside Tim's window as he finishes a conversation with his doctor and says he'll be over soon. Tim exits his bedroom and Hoodie sneaks in. He steals Tim's pills, sets up his camera in the closet, and steps inside as Tim comes back, coughing and wheezing. He struggles to get his medication but can't find it and suffers a seizure on the floor as Hoodie says, Look what you have caused. When Tim's body relaxes, he gets up awkwardly, overly cautious as if using his body for the first time or remembering how his limbs work. He exits the room without a sound. Hoodie steps out, takes the camera, and leaves. While walking down the street, he says, Where could he have gone? This is your only chance. Binary code passes by that means the trees. Jay re-uploads the private video as a public version with his own commentary and notes that there was a storm just a while ago, so the video is very recent. He thinks he knows where Tim went and is heading there. On Twitter, he regains control. It's Jay. Finally got this account back. The password had been changed up until now. It should go without saying, but I didn't upload entry to the YouTube channel. I have to find Tim. Jay uploads two pictures from the road to let followers know he's really on his way to get Tim. His last tweet comes just past midnight on August 9th. Don't want to give away where I am. No more tweets for now. We don't hear from Jay in any capacity until 12.20 a.m. on September 1st, when entry number 62 is uploaded. He goes into Roswood Park and finds Tim as Maskey, who chases him around the woods until he finally catches Jay, strangles him, and drags him off scene. The camera picks up during daylight in a wooden shed where Jay is lying against the wall. He wakes up, takes the camera, and walks around and finds Tim outside. Neither of them know where they are, how they got there, or what happened. The video ends abruptly. On September 4th, Jay tweets, Tim and I are both okay. I'm pretty sure he's going to help me now. The next action is a video response by To The Ark titled, Isolation.
The video description is, alone, alone, alone. There's a lot to be gained from this video and it mainly lies in the title and video description. Hoodie is alone. He's isolated himself from Maskey and has no chance now of really using him for further plots as part of To The Ark. The very opening frames in the video reveal that secret meaning by way of showing a tree splitting in two. A tree that, at first, looks like two trees connected at the hip, as if they were conjoined twins. They split in half and then the messages roll through with footage of the woods and the red shed. The twins, Hoodie and Maskey, have just been divided. We roll past who is he, who are you, to an eye looking through a hole in the shed wall with the question, where is he? And for a brief frame, this turns into, where is she? We have a wall of the repeated word, where, and then, meet again soon. We spot Hoodie and then for two quick frames, we see the operator in a message, follows all. Now it's established that the twins have been divided, the twins being Hoodie and Maskey. So why is Hoodie alone if there's a third to the Ark member? That member hasn't been heard from for a while, both in reference to the series and to Hoodie. The eyeball looking through the hole next to Where is He is reminiscent of Extraction, a video from the original to the Ark member Hoodie is working with who first used the giant eyeball in the tunnel scene where Alex murdered a man. This to the Ark member seems to make watching their calling card. They were watching Jay all the way back to the Marble Hornet set, recording him from the shadows in Exit and later in Season 1 during his trip to Brian's house. They make constant references to the act of watching throughout their videos, even using the term eyes in an early video description. They also knew Alex was watching the Marble Hornet's channel because they were watching him. It seems that, above all else, the original member of To The Ark seems to be the one who sees everything and doesn't do much beyond respond and lead Jay when they have to go into the field. If Hoodie named this video Isolation and declared how alone he is in the description as well, then he really hasn't heard from To The Ark's founding member for a while, and the eyeball is probably their self-identifying symbol. This makes sense for why Hoodie would ask, where is he? If we dig deeper into communications between To The Ark members as well, the last time Hoodie spoke to the founder was right after their first video, Classified. Side note, the next to the arc video is obviously from Hoodie, and the video description is a very clear message. Remain seated, I will find you. It's very doubtful he's telling Jay to sit still so we can find him. That's the complete opposite of what Jay wants, and we know Hoodie has no problem tracking Jay wherever he goes. As for where is she, there is the issue of Jessica still being missing, which Jay is concerned about. Amy is still gone as well, so it could mean either of them, but it's Jessica who we know is affected by the operator, making her a person of interest for members of To The Ark. And before we move on, let's not forget how Jay and Tim seem to return from whatever happened in the woods nearly a full month after the events of Entry Number 62, which took place on the same day as Entry Number 61. Remember, on August 3rd, To The Ark uploaded the private video that Jay made public as Entry Number 61, and he went to rescue Tim that same night. He didn't manage to upload the footage or confirm he and Tim were okay until September 1st, despite live-tweeting his rescue mission on August 3rd. A serious leap in time has been taken between what happened in the woods and the morning Jay and Tim woke up in the shed. There was an incident of this nature last season when To The Ark uploaded the footage of Alex's birthday and Jay ended up at the Red Tower miles from home, only to take an absurd amount of time getting out of there and returning to make sure his tapes and camera weren't stolen. And we see an evidence of what appears to be time travel on film in season 1 as well, when Jay goes to Brian's house early in the day and walks through a door upstairs into nighttime during the first few minutes inside. Finally, did you happen to catch that all of To The Ark's tweets from Jay's Marble Hornets account were foreshadowing a coming rainstorm? Jay even comments that there was a storm just before the footage and the private entry of Hoodie stealing Tim's pills was uploaded to his channel. Hoodie seems to be just as hung up on the Noah's Ark metaphor and water imagery as to the Ark's founding member. On September 25th, 2012, Jay uploads the next entry, number 63. He meets with Tim in a parking lot outside his job and gives back the medical files. Tim asks Jay what his plan is and he says it's to find Jessica. Tim is more concerned with being stalked by Hoodie, who Jay remarks is probably watching them right then and there. Tim agrees to help find Jessica once they clear up the hoodie situation. He admits Rosswood is their only lead and they do have to go back. Both agree to head to the park as soon as Tim has a day off work and Jay leaves. On Thursday, October 4th, Jay tweets, Going back to Rosswood with Tim on Sunday. They do go on their investigation, but entry number 64 is uploaded on October 13th. Jay and Tim meet up for their mission and check out the woodshed where Alex pulled a gun on Jay and Jessica. Tim has no memory of the event as masking and says he can't remember anything at all from any time he's in that mental state. They head to the tunnel where Alex committed a murder, but Tim noticeably comes down with a bit of coughing sickness on the way. At the tunnel, they walk around a bit but can't find anything. Jay gets a call on his cell phone from a number he doesn't recognize. Hello? Leave. Now. That was Alex. What? I mean, he just hung up, but that was Alex. Is he here? Hold on a minute, try and call back. He's not gonna answer. I'm gonna try. You think he's following us? Probably. I mean, if he just calls telling us to leave, then we're probably about to find something he doesn't want us to see, so let's keep going. Well, we need to get out of here right now, then, if he's been following us. <laughs> what? Well, go up here and let's go back. Come on. Come on! Come on!
Jay runs all the way back to the parking lot where somehow Tim is sitting in his car. Jay tries to get his attention, but Tim stays silent, slowly turns on the car, and backs out while Jay yells for him to come back. Okay. Hey, open the door. What happened? Tim, wait. What are you doing? Tim! Tim, wait! Tim! <coughs> To the ARC uploads their response, display. Amazing how that video started with an obvious image of water, isn't it? And lots of it, too. In case you missed it, the full messages are, You abandoned him. I saw. He is searching for you. Alex is searching for you. Watch death. And in the video description, eyes see. Did you catch a guest appearance in this video as well? Take a look at the burnout image of this girl next to the tunnel. It's Jessica. Jay notices through the ARC's update, but is more concerned with the current problem. Still no word from Tim. I'm trying to work up the courage to go back to Rosswood to find him, but could he even still be there? At June number 65 is uploaded in November, a little over two weeks later. The footage is of Jay and Tim's investigation in the last entry, but from Tim's camera, which means Jay just made contact behind the scenes after weeks of waiting. There's nothing different about this except for heavy audio distortion from Tim's chest-mounted camera up until the operator attack in the tunnel. After telling Jay to run, Tim collapses and then is transported underwater. <laughs> Do you recognize this man? It's the one Alex killed in the tunnel. This is where the operator took his body. <laughs>
Tim ends up at the abandoned hospital and relives traumatic childhood memories of hallucinations he used to have there, until he finds Hoodie's messages on the wall about him being a liar. Tim picks up a metal pipe and tries to break the words off the wall. He passes out and the video jump cuts to black overlaid with a message from Tim on Jay's voicemail asking for a meeting. They meet, and after Tim hands Jay the camera containing all the footage we just saw, he says they have to go back to the hospital. It's very important. Time passes by slowly with no action. Jay tweets on December 20th, Tim has been working constantly ever since entry number 65. Told me to get some money saved up. I think he's considering quitting his job. On December 31st, the Ark uploads a new video, Surveillance. The video description is, continue on. Before we get to code breaking, let's take a look at all the quick shot frames that flew by you may not have caught at first. Now, about that code, it is literally impossible to break. No, I'm not joking. Troy forgot to include a cipher key for this code, and Marble Hornets fans who had dedicated themselves to cracking to the arc messages for the community went nuts trying to solve this. Remember how I said Troy would use a major instance of leading the audience by the hand to solve a plot point late in the series during our last video? It's been admitted at least twice at panels that this was the time Troy made something not even professional codebreakers could manage without guessing the cipher, and because of that, Troy had to jump on Twitter and character as Jay to work it all out in excruciating detail. Still, it does give a lot of insight into Jay's character and reveals he is attempting to decode messages from to the Ark. Friday, January 4th, 2013. Still can't figure out the numbers at the end of the latest to the Ark video. It's driving me crazy. Saturday, January 5th. Still working on it. There's an even amount of numbers in each set and a few number of pairs repeat. Maybe a pair corresponds to a letter? If a pair equals one letter, there's 26 letters in total. But there's only nine unique numbers. Could each number have multiple letters? Seems unlikely that all 26 letters of the alphabet are used too, just need to figure out which ones could be missing. Two of the pairs are mirrors and are grouped together twice, 27, 72, and 57, 75. Not sure what that can mean yet though. Common letters? It takes 6 days and 16 more tweets to reach the message. Truly your fault? And she's out there. In between, to the arc broken to drop another code as a tweet. I am watching. After Jay finishes solving the surveillance code on Twitter, he uploads entry number 66. Jay meets Tim at the abandoned hospital where he admits that the incidents of being a patient for extended periods in childhood took place here. Well, my, my mom brought me here when I was really young, but she never told me exactly why. You never asked her? She's never really around to ask. And the doctors would never tell me to my face either, but I'd always hear them say things like violent episodes or delusions, you know, stuff you can't just tell a little kid. We ran all kinds of tests and pinned just about every disorder you could think of on me at some point or another. And they settled on schizophrenia eventually, but I don't even think they knew for sure. I was on a lot of medication most of the time I was here. I got used to it after a while, and it helped, but not enough. Well, one of the problems I was having was hallucinations. I had a lot of them. And part of me knew they weren't real, but that still didn't make them go away. I Maybe mean, I just didn't want them to at the time. At one point they got so bad I kept escaping from my room. I'd hide in the maintenance tunnel or run off to Rosswood Park, which you know isn't that far away from here. 
And whenever they would find me, I would say that I was hiding from whatever it was I was seeing, so they'd bring me back and I didn't have much of a choice except to lock me in here. That's when it was at its worst. And I'd be clawing at the walls and screaming at all hours of the night. I had to up my doses just to calm me down to the point where I was almost numb. But these hallucinations, what did they look like? Well, that's the thing, I can't remember any of them. Probably because of the medication. It didn't cure me exactly, but it kind of leveled me out enough that I was able to you know, go to a normal school, I got transferred to another facility, got into college. That's where I met Brian, the first real friend I remember having. That's where you met Alex too, right? Yeah. When I saw that footage that you got from him, and that person in the background or whatever it was, I couldn't help but think, you know, what if that's what I was seeing when I was in here? You know, what if that wasn't a hallucination at all? Wait, what are you trying to say? I'm saying, what if this is my fault? Alex could be a normal person, you could be living a normal life, so could Jessica, so could everybody else if it wasn't for me. I have no way of knowing that for sure, that's always going to be in the back of my mind. How am I supposed to handle that? I... I don't think shifting the blame is really going to help anyone right now. I blamed everybody else except for me and I could be the one that started this. I think you just need to relax because all the stress is probably making you really paranoid. Well, what if I'm right?! What if what happened to me is happening to Alex right now? I don't know. But... I do know that you're not like him. Not entirely, anyway. He's not running around in the woods with a mask on at night. No, but you're not pointing a gun at me right now, either. <laughs> well, that's it. No more secrets. After Jay helps Tim out of his episode, they explore the hospital looking for anything that can help them. Hoodie appears and they tell him to a room where he put a hidden tape, checking to see if it had been discovered. Hoodie leaves, they chase him through the woods, and he vanishes at the edge of an open field. Jay manages to clean up the tape and uploads the footage as entry number 67. Hoodie drags an unconscious Tim out of the hospital after he passes out from hitting the wall with a pipe in entry number 65. Hoodie takes the pipe and patrols the building for a bit before suddenly ducking under a window. Alex passes by and Hoodie tails him through the abandoned building until Tim wakes up and starts golfing. Alex is immediately alerted and heads in his direction, but Hoodie rushes up behind him and clocks him over the head with the metal pipe. We jump cut to Alex yelling at Hoodie while tied to a chair. Hoodie steps into the other room where Tim is crouched against the wall. Tim gets up, runs into the room with Alex, and starts punching him. Once Tim is done, Alex lays on the ground, looking pretty bruised. Hoodie pulls Alex's gun from his belt and is about to shoot him when the operator appears in the doorway. Black and white distortion occurs and the camera picks up at night with Hoodie walking around holding Alex's gun in the woods. He's been teleported through time and space, far from Alex. We jump cut to Tim lying in the woods with his mask nearby in the morning. Tim gets up, has a slight coughing fit, looks around, and then walks off without his mask. In entry number 67.5, Tim and Jay pack up their things and go. They're completely aware now that Alex is onto them and he's gaining ground. If you're wondering how Alex knew to hang around the abandoned hospital, bear in mind that Alex is constantly watching the Marble Hornets channel and Twitter account, and Jay gave away the day he and Tim would be investigating areas of interest. On Thursday, October 4th, Jay tweeted, Going back to Rosswood with Tim on Sunday. That means Alex knew for a fact he could catch Tim and Jay in the woods that week on October 7th. Jay had told him and anyone else who could take advantage of it. This is why Alex called Jay while they were in the tunnel. Alex knew where they were because he was following them. All he had to do after getting Jay's tweet was hang out at Rosswood until Tim and Jay appeared, then stalk them through the woods. After seeing the operator take Tim in the tunnel, Alex had to think of where he might end up. I doubt Alex managed to catch him in the parking lot leaving, and not even Jay could have followed him from there. However, there's one place Alex knew Tim just might go to afterward, or for that matter, he knew where Jay would go looking for Tim after being taken by the operator, so he went to the abandoned hospital. He didn't find Jay, but he sure found Hoodie and Tim. Unfortunately, the operator saved Alex, and all Hoodie could do after being pulled through time and space was leave the tape for Tim and Jay to find. Next, the arc breaks into the Marvel Hornets account and uploads a video titled 68, which Jay sets up in his own framing and relabels entry number 68. Hoodie is hanging out in an abandoned building where he has a bed and some water. He seems to hear something and investigates. Where did they go? 
Where Jay and Tim? Wipe that stupid smile off your face. After Hoodie runs through some woods, we get some distortion and a message. You will not. More walking than an image of the abandoned factory's maintenance tunnel entrance. A message appears. You are afraid. I am not. We see Jay jump into the tunnel entrance, some orange distortion, and then Hoodie films himself in a tunnel wing turning off a lantern light. The final message is, you are trapped. We are trapped. Jay is now fully aware Alex is hunting them, but doesn't know where they are, and he's going to keep it that way. An interesting bit about this entry is Alex's appearance. He has very visible bruises from Tim's beating and is also sporting a goatee. Alex doesn't have facial hair. He's always been clean shaven until now. Clearly, he hasn't shaved in a while, and when you also take into account he doesn't have a new pair of glasses, it's easy to realize that Alex hasn't been home for at least a few weeks. Alex is on the run. Jay's uploads on YouTube put him in seriously hot water, and he must have dropped right out of public life so he could escape anyone who might want to catch him. The police, for instance, after anyone at all who knew Alex and had seen Marvel Hornets would have shown them the video where he pulled a gun on Jay and Jessica. There's also the issue of Hoodie, Maskey, and Jay knowing where Alex was living just weeks ago before his attempted murder, so he can't exactly stay there. On April 4th, Alex's birthday, To The Ark uploads Decline. The video description reads, Can you see any truth at all? The number spray painted on the wall in this video mean, He will pay. The noise at the end playing over Alex's bleeding head footage is another spectrogram message. Have you made me a liar, or is he gone? This video comes almost a month after Hoodie uploaded footage of being attacked by Alex, so it seems they don't even know where Alex is right now. And finally, the phrases in the video might be lyrics from the song Pretender by the musician Eiley. Jay uploads entry number 69. Tim and Jay return to the woods from the Marble Hornet set to look around. Jay keeps swearing he sees someone in the woods as they investigate, but Tim can't see anything. They check out the red tower but find nothing and leave. On the way back to the car, Jay trips on a large hole. Tim looks into the hole and finds burnt videotapes. Lots of burnt videotapes. He and Jay collect them all and head back to the car. If you're an avid watcher of Marble Hornets, you might remember this hole all the way back in Season 1 when Jay's camera audio started acting up as he passed it going to the red tower. It wasn't covered in our first review because it just didn't bear mentioning until now. Jay gets one of the burn tapes working and uploads entry number 70. Alex is driving at night after a day of shooting Marble Hornets and gets a call from Amy. He talks about possibly transferring to her college and then lies about being out on the road. We find out Alex is driving to the playground where he encountered the operator in one of the first entries from season 1, so this was the tape before that entry. Jay gets another tape working and uploads entry number 71. Alex is boxing up some tapes in preparation for his move. He spends some time staring out the window and in setting up a camera at his front door, we experience audio distortion. Jay arrives, helps Alex pack, and after an argument over the Marble Hornets tapes, leaves with bags full of them. This is the video footage of Jay's encounter with Alex from his initial post in 2009 on something awful about the whole Marble Hornet story and his old friend Alex. Jay leaves with the bags of tapes and Alex has to never mention them again. He watches Jay out his window then picks up the camera and goes to another window. Alex then goes outside to Jay's car and attacks him before the screen distorts completely to video snow. We jump cut to Jay on the ground with Alex beating him. After distortion, some footage of Jay getting choked out, followed by a distortion effect on Jay's face looking up from an entirely different shot. The video cuts the clean footage of Jay lying on the ground unconscious as Alex backs away and leaves. Alex drives home. He must have driven Jay away from the house and dropped him in the woods. Jay expresses that he doesn't remember any of this happening past the point of getting the tapes. He only remembers going home with them. He speculates on what else he's remembering wrong or what he's forgotten entirely due to Alex. This completes the pattern we saw Alex establish with Seth, Brian, and Tim. Jay was another victim he purposely brought to the operator. We can easily assume at this point Sarah was a victim as well, being part of Alex's Everyone Is Gone monologue from Season 1. I've got no doubt it was Sarah's blood on the walls in the basement where Seth disappeared. Seth could have been tricked down there as the designated cameraman, but Alex would have had a hard time getting Sarah to go with him under her own will. And once down there, she would have put up a fight. And it's not like Alex doesn't get violent during these attacks. We've seen too often just how much physical damage he'll unload on a victim until the operator claims them. Jay tweets that he'll be uploading entry number 72, but there's something kind of… off. 
uploading entry 72 tomorrow night. Jay usually capitalizes his tweets and uses hashtags before his entry numbers when updating followers. He also misspelled tomorrow. Entry number 72 does come up, containing Tim and Jay's next stop, Alex's old house during the Marble Hornet shoot. This is their only lead after seeing what happened to Jay in the last entry when he got the original tapes from Alex, and there could be something left behind, like the box Alex put in the closet. As they search, Jay wonders why Alex gave him the tapes in the first place. Tim speculates that he only gave Jay the tapes that made him look like a victim instead of the cause. He also notes that Alex attacking Jay seemed very sudden and unplanned, and Jay notes that he most likely burned the driving tape so nobody knew his plans to go to Amy's school. Jay explores the closet where Alex put the box of tapes and finds operator pages. There are names of Marble Hornet's crew members crossed off on them. Jay hallucinates someone outside through the window to the sound of heavy auto distortion and panics. Tim is convinced he needs to get help. He's been seeing a lot of things that aren't there lately. But while Jay puts down the camera later to help Tim open a stuck door, we clearly see the operator outside. They go to the basement and find it's now nighttime, but it was only just before sunset seconds ago. Is that outside? Yeah. Come on, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Jay passes Tim his camera, they keep running and Tim loses Jay after some distortion. He heads back, gets whirled around, has a coughing fit, takes some pills and then gets back on his feet. Tim rushes to Jay after finally spotting the backyard light. Jay's on the ground unconscious and distortion picks up as Tim attempts to help. The operator appears and Tim challenges it as Jay has a seizure. Tim gets a few yards close before collapsing to one knee and he bends over, starting to break. After some heavy distortion, the operator disappears and the scene returns to normal. Tim gets up and rescues Jay, who can barely stand or comprehend his surroundings and they leave. This kind of disrupted post-operator state is what caused the odd behavior in Jay's tweet announcing this entry. He's been hit hard during the investigation of Alex's old house and it shows. The next tweet even proves it. This is Tim. Jay gave me the password for this in case I ever need it. He's been kind of out of it since we got away from that house. Part 1 of our Season 3 review stops here, friends. We're running out of moonlight. It seems that Jay really isn't doing well after this encounter with the operator, but Tim seems to be doing better than ever. Keep in mind everything we've learned this episode, because we'll be back soon to finish this once and for all in Part 2. All secrets will be revealed, I promise. If you've enjoyed this review and I helped clear up some questions, feel free to hit the like button and leave a comment if you wish. Make sure to subscribe and join your fellow creatures of the night to catch the next and final review as soon as it's uploaded, as well as more horror and mystery reviews, news, and profiles, as well as a few special things coming your way. As always, your support is extremely appreciated. Thanks again for joining me in the dark this evening and giving in to your night mind. As always, I'm Nick Nocturne, and we'll be meeting again real soon. Sleep tight. <laughs>